flow. Uh, now you see even, I have no idea what went there, what happened, uh, but yay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? They should be hearing you. Can you, you. hear me? Yes. Hello, friends. Please, give me, give, give me. Yeah, I validate cache and restart. Always works. That or the nuke yeah. script, but we don't have a nuke script for OBS yet, I guess. Of so yeah. um, let's restart. So, so uh, what I was yay. saying, what I was saying very quickly is um, on Sunday we're trying to use Shot because there's a new version that supports Windows theoretically. Uh, I have worked a bit with the uh, people from Shot to try and figure out what didn't actually work out. Uh, turns out that on their repository, it works fine. On our repository, other people can reproduce the same problem. So I have no idea what's going on. I hope they're going to figure it out and fix it. We'll be keeping in touch with them to try and, uh, and uh, help them reproduce and fix the problem. Uh, that was a small follow-up from Sunday. Today, we are doing uh, widgets. So if you remember a few weeks ago with Mark, we had an episode where we did uh, take an early look at Glance. Uh, Glance is um, a library that you can use to create app widgets that look that, that well, the API of the library looks much, much nicer than uh, the alternative old school remote views based stuff was because there's no XML, of course, which is already a good thing. Oh, hi, Yuani. And um, so what we're going to do today is a few things. First of all, we're going to update to a newer snapshot. Second of all, we are going to try and see if we can figure out what the wrong, uh, what is the problem we are having that sometimes makes the uh, widget uh, error out. Now, I don't know if it's a bug in our code or if it's a bug in the uh, Glance code because, uh, I mean, it's a snapshot, you know, never really know. So we're, we're going to see if updating fixes it. If not, we're going to try and fix it. But before we try and fix it, we're also going to, I'm going to give you an overview of uh, how to make the widget look nicer uh, when the user is about to pick it. Because in the picker right now, it's just, a thing, a blobby thing that has no use really. Uh, so let's say uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna make all those things nicer, and then we have a surprise for you, uh, but not now. Later, Ivan, do your thing. Yes. So let's go. Um, we start with the usual thing. We are gonna give away stickers, yeah, and we are gonna keep uh, gathering um, comments on a youtube video because next sunday uh, to celebrate the end of the day the end of the year with the last stream we are gonna um give away two uh, two intellij ultimate licenses so uh, i'm gonna be posting the um, uh, the messages like the, the instructions or let's say the instructions to to participate to the giveaway it's the usual stuff so no uh, no crazy thing if you are a uh, follower um, nothing nothing new if you are um, new to the stream uh, you can subscribe to the stream uh, for free and you can support the channel if you have an Amazon Prime subscription. Um, there, is a, there is a high chance that uh, Uncle Bezos uh, won't need the money and uh, they are going to give us a bit of a, a share of what you get for the Twitch subscription. So basically, if you have an Amazon Prime, you can connect to the, your Twitch account, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, you will see a blue button that says subscribe with Prime. Uh, it's free for you. We get about $1-ish and we are going to buy more of this stuff. So this is what you, you get. Mean when you, you, you I mean stickers? I mean stickers, yes. <laughs> so the idea is that uh, if you are a subscriber, you get also the uh, fancy holo sticker. And, and of course, you also get a bunch of other stickers. Uh, you know, because JetBrains loves us and we love JetBrains. And uh, you also get uh, a new um, kind, 
yeah, thank thank you present in the in the envelope uh, that we don't want to spoil, so I'm not gonna show it. Um, you can also support the channel uh, with we have a coffee page. Um, coffee is a platform to support creators. Um, you can subscribe to one of our tiers. We start like from one dollar per month, or you can even do a, like a one shot. Uh, um, a one shot donation. We have a current goal that we are uh, 60 ish percent uh, through. Um, we will reach $200 and we will hire a designer to uh, work on the app UI. So the app is not going to look like an app made by developers that, you know, you know, hopefully is going to work, but also it's going to look <laughs> Kind of ugly. Um, so the so th this is it. well. We also have um, we also have swag that you can buy. Um, you can buy on our on our website, and um, we were running. Um, we were running actually a discount. What a um, fail! That it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the idea is. So this is this is the thing that I was. Uh, yeah, we were discussing. Uh, how we are how much we are bad at this so i wanted to be fancy and give you a discount for getting a t-shirt or a, a mug or like stickers and i created a 20 percent off discount code and we were like you know giving away the discount code you know every, every, every well, everything looked okay until actually jose it was all Jose. Jose yep. tried to actually buy stuff, and it was like, you know, the code doesn't work. And I was like, what? What do you mean doesn't work? And I looked it up, and apparently, uh, we we are so our our margin, okay, because we are uh, we are buying Teslas like you know like you know, like chips. Yep. So our margins on our swag, we set it up so low that if we applied a 20% discount code, we were going below the actual cost of the 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 t-shirt the so the the discount code was not working because we we're like yeah 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 genius this thing is gonna be so cheap so uh scrap the scrap the the discount code we now have like a, a new discount code that is called uh just uh xmas i'm go i'm putting it in the chat if you just want to apply it's gonna take like one dollar off of the total which is probably out. the majority of the margin we have on that so <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's that's <laughs> that's probably i mean if that was the, the the safe bet i was like okay i want to give a discount but i cannot give a percentage so i'm gonna say you know what just one dollar and so the the feedback uh the feedback was um very very funny from jose and then he was like you know the only way to fix the problem is to increase the price of the swag uh, so, <laughs> so, but we don't want to do that because we just want to, to for you to have a, a t-shirt so just go there buy a t-shirt if you like it um, and uh, the money that we raise with donations and things like that once we reach the goal is gonna be um, funding this exact thing so we want to give back also um, the um, T-shirts and and stuff. So we are gonna we are gonna buy stuff and send you stuff. So enough, enough. Done. Let's code. Let's code. Okay. Um, code. Okay. So we said the first thing we were going to do uh, would be to uh, update the version of uh, shot. Now, if you remember uh, of not shot of glass. God, I, I'm already. <laughs> too tired. Uh, PTSD. I've I've managed uh, to, PTSD, to call man. someone with the wrong name twice. <laughs> and bad. now I <laughs> today is not the day for names. That's that's for sure. Um so if you remember, we're using a snapshot version of Glance, but because of the way uh the snapshots work for Android X dependencies, what we actually have to do is we need to go and change the uh, repository repository URL here with the newer build ID. So what we do is we go on androidx.dev and we go latest build, and then we wait a bit, and then we copy the number from here and we put it here. 
and then we sing and then we pray that everything is still fine. <laughs> uh, this should only impact theoretically. Oh, Mark, no, I would never call you Susan. I would call you Martin, maybe? <laughs> like, it's Shirley. similar Don't names. It's not entirely different. I, I would have called you Martin, maybe. But Call me Shirley. Yeah. Um, so this is downloading stuff. We're just going to leave it there to do its thing. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to point out that I found this uh, repository here. Um, user interface samples uh, in the Android repository uh, where there is uh, this sample code for Glance widget. I haven't had the time to look at it yet, but it exists. So there's that. So the one on the one on GitHub? Yeah, the one on GitHub. Um, let's this. And yeah, go. so let's let's check if it's done should be done come on come on come on come on come on yes i mean it's 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 done it's done why is any this chance, still saying in progress any chance you can <laughs> okay. share the screen because i mean i, I all right I sorry and, yeah, and yeah i'm yeah. not i never tired of look at you but understood there you go nice. There you go. Yeah, I forgot that you disconnected Super. and reconnected to the call. Yeah, I mean, today is one of those days. Oh, by the <laughs> way, hugs, hugs, thoughts, and prayers to our friends at AWS. <coughs> More like our friends at Twitch, because uh, it looked like AWS was fine. Mostly, at least their status page was like, now everything is fine. It's just Twitch that's fucked. <laughs> Not my fault. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, sure. That's something along sincere. those lines. Yeah, uh, this is not working. So um, let's see if we can kill it. Uh, I don't know if we need to. No, I think it's Android Studio got fucked. That's fine. Let's close the Which project. Which version are you using? The Canary like the Four. Nightly build as your yes. <laughs> Nightly build as your no, usual. I'm using Canary 4 because I need to use the Android Gradle plugin 7.2. So I need to use the Canary. Unfortunately, uh -huh. um, fancy. I, I don't have much choice. Okay. So should be fine. Uh, I would say first thing first would be to run the app and see if it works. Uh, unfortunately, uh, doesn't want to. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> okay. Try, try. Yeah, why not? I'm just, just... gonna, I'm just gonna restart it. It's fine. Android <laughs> Studio is a bug. Deja bug. <laughs> Deja, Deja bug. Yeah. Deja Good bug. one. Good one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like you know, in the Matrix at some point, uh -huh. like, like, they're they're rec they're recompiling. Uh huh. But why? What's going on? It no, 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 wait. Give it, give, it a, give it a moment. I mean, there, something was moving there. Okay. So I can run uh, static analysis. No, I, th I think I think the sync is broken. When you don't get the, the run, it's the sync that basically didn't go I through. Mean, I, I can do a sync again. But I don't know if that's going to work. Well, uh, let's see if the tech is happy. I mean, for the sake of quality. Oh, I right? killed it. Because I wanted to sink. Sorry. No worries. Um, it's never a joy. But in I the mean, meantime. I spent my day with the Google Cast, Chromecast SDK. So this is this is easy peasy. <laughs> You're just like, I'm and used I mean, to this shit. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I, that's, that's a def de definitely, um, like a complex piece of software, but man, uh, it's uh, it's heavy. Yeah. Now but... I'm a, I'm a web developer because I'm building a custom receiver. Ooh. I didn't even know that they existed. Yeah. yeah. That's, now I'm uh, yeah, I I can put it on my resume now that I can do HTML5. At least you yeah. have people in your team that have done that before. At least in part. So kinda, yeah, kinda. They are also, yeah. Even uh, you, you need to take care of this. So that's, I mean, that's. 
because they know what what we need to do they were like yeah delegation is one of the leadership you know the skill that you need to master okay so talking about so, um widgets widgets uh home widgets hub widgets widgets yeah. as as uh roman and chat with talking about uh, in last l latest episode of uh, Android Backstage. Jesus, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> they were discussing exactly app widget and it was a fascinating episode and you know, they were discussing uh, a lot of interesting things. If you have w watched or listened to it, like listening to it, um, it's it's nice because they, they start from, from far, far away and then they actually walk us through glance and the new things and all the uh, thought process that um, was put into um, building a better ABI and moving away from the remote views that were a bit painful to use. And now that Apple invented <coughs> uh, widgets, uh, so now we we can also use them on Android, uh, even if they have been there like for ten years. Uh, but yeah, so that yeah, was that was an interesting thing. Check not it out. as nice. <laughs> By the this way, is not work. Right? Yeah, no, it's not working. But uh, Toolbox has just started. Uh, I noticed uh, upgrading uh, Android Studio to Canary Six, so maybe that will work. I don't know. So. Wow. It's almost yeah, done sure, downloading but, it. Uh, what, could, <laughs> what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Uh, I, mean, it's, I was it's complaining right. about you being on the latest version. Why, why don't we just step on Update the latest, latest? I mean, the super latest one. This one is not working. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but did you touch anything? I mean, no. ju I'm just saying, I'm asking no. for a friend. So, I have what's not, the diff at the moment? I have not what's done anything. Diff? I don't the, believe you. I don't is, believe you. This so. is the git diff, dude. Uh, what That's is this? This is the the stuff from still shot. The stuff from screenshots. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so a Stack Overflow exception. Okay. Yep. Wow. Yes, there was my friend. Yes, there was. Uh, I think what I will do is I will update this to Alpha Six, and as soon okay, as uh, try again. As soon as uh, Toolbox is done. Uh, but it seems like it restarted downloading everything because hashtag reasons. I don't know. Probably because it failed patching it because it was running. It's fine. It will work. Uh, but yeah, so uh, while that works, I have pre-updated this. I'm going to close Android Studio, let Toolbox do its thing, and we can start looking at uh, the widget stuff because... Uh, this okay, is something so, I wanted to do later, but we can do it now as well. It's the same thing. Yes, something that I that mm -hmm. I know because they talked about, uh, and we uh, we already had um, like an idea because probably Mark uh, mentioned it in the previous episode. You can interact with widgets at some level now on Android twelve, like check boxes and you know things like to do lists mm -hmm. and things like that. Am I right? Yes. Um, what they were saying, because when you told me, I actually listened to it. It was funnily enough, the next podcast I had in my queue. So I finished the one that I was listening to. And uh, and then I listened to that as well. So um, okay. what are I, things? Yeah, there are new things. And uh, so you can see there's new compound button stuff. Uh, that you can use. Uh, you can use checkboxes, you can use switches, radio buttons. That's all stuff that you thought was there already, but it wasn't. You could kind of fake it, uh, but you had to code a lot of stuff and keep track of state, and it was really confusing. <clears throat> so what you can do uh, is now you just have this. But unfortunately, remote views are only uh, existing in the um, uh, in the system process, so like even if your app is up to date and tries to use that stuff, if you run it on Android eleven, uh, that's gonna crash because it the remote work, views yeah. for that don't exist. Uh, is it is it gonna crash? I think there's so. Like yes. Not even uh, 
Okay. Well, that's I think it that is going to mind. crashy crash. Um, uh, I hope we get some warning from Android Studio. You know that those are useful. Like I you know, you think Lint. I think Lint will point out that that's a uh, that is an API that requires uh, minimum SDK something something. I would expect it to. Fair enough. Because it's not different Fair from enough. anything else really that that you would do that like any other API. Um, then there is, uh, oh yeah, there's size stuff. So now finally in Android 12, finally, you can say my widget should be at least uh, this number of cells small or at most this number of cells before you had to do it with dips. And doing it with dips was a pain yeah, in the fucking ass because every single launcher out there has a different cell size depending on the launcher, depending on the user settings, depending on the device screen, on the orientation. It was a mess. So now finally you can say I want to be like two cells or at, two at minimum two, two cells. And mean yeah, wide or tall. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, there's some other stuff that we don't really care too much. Uh but mm -hmm. the important thing is that this stuff, like the new compound buttons, if you use glance, you get for free. Like they've done the the work of backporting that stuff to previous versions with like doing all the hacks that you would have had to do yourself, they are doing that for you. So you can use checkboxes and switches and radio buttons in Glance, I think, as far as I understand, uh, that way. Um, okay. So, so it, should be, it should be healthier to use. Yes, it should be fine. It should be better. And I think uh, other stuff that I wanted to talk about was um, that uh, I wanted to show some uh, uh, some things about widgets. But I think it's time for our surprise. Hello, surprise. <laughs> so Hi there. surprise is here. Surprise is. Hello! Hi, surprise! Welcome to Code with the Italians. Hello, Our... how is everyone doing? We're doing better now that things Fine. are maybe working. I don't know. I'm waiting for Android Studio update. Oh, it's finished, so I can relaunch it in the meantime, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're having some issues where uh, it refused to launch the app, which not great. Um, but I hope it will work now. Maybe question mark. I can see the play button, so that's a start. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, I think you should introduce yourself, uh, as is the tradition. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So happy to be here. Uh, so for the ones that don't know me, uh, my name is Marcel. I'm a developer relations engineer at Google, and I'm actually um, one of the DREs that works around. Um, glance and widgets and has been working <laughs> uh, to kind of revamp uh, the widgets from um, Android 1.5, I think they were released uh, for the first time. So we work uh, during the last year um, to improve them and to give this like new paint on top of it and add new features. Um, but we did not want to stop there, so we start creating Glance for App Widgets, that it's a compose based library that da, 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 we just announced the first alpha. Surprise! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, so you just it, have it the first alpha easier. now. It gets a bit easier to, yeah. to use. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully yes. <laughs> oh, from, from, at least from an in, from a dependency point of view, probably. Or... Yes, correct. So now now you can depend on a fixed version that is alpha, um, so one point zero, um, alpha zero one, um, and you don't need to use the snapshots anymore. This means um, that you will have a fixed build with a fixed API, but is alpha. So every time that you um, we release new alpha version, it um, it might change, right? Uh, API can be break uh, broken without any um, backwards compatibility support or anything. 
Um, so it's still early stages. Uh, this first um, release contains most of the um, APIs that are needed to create a fully functional widget, I would say. Um, there are things missing, for sure, and there are a lot of things to improve. And this is where we actually would love to get the um, feedback from all the developers and everyone to uh, try it out and let us know. We are here. Yes. That's why we are here. Because so usually we break things. So we, <laughs> so our, our input is invaluable. You so were the uh, first the, uh, early adopters, for sure. <laughs> the first well, no, that was Mark Ellis. Yeah. Mark Ellis was like the nightly build adopter. <laughs> and it was like, I, I'm pretty sure that he was getting the, the AAR from your machine. <laughs> like, you know, it was actually hacking into your machine and just because, the, yeah, that's that's what that was I'm doing, Mark. I'm blaming you. It was like, yeah, yeah, there is this new library. And I was like, where is it? Oh, there is on a like experimental snapshot, whatever repository by Google. I was, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how can you find this stuff? You know, so that was that was Mark uh, a few weeks ago. So, um, Thank you for uh, working on this, and I, I really, I really want. I'm looking forward to to put this stuff in my apps because uh, my wife loves uh, widgets, and as you know, happy wife, happy life. And now so you can love I widgets could... as well. That's the point. Yeah, no, no, no. But the thing <laughs> is, I mostly, I mostly build apps for her. And my my current app is like a to do list, and she loves uh, widgets. So now I need to build a widget for the to do list, and this is this is great timing. So I'm very grateful, Marcel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you to all the team behind that as well. I'm I'm just here um, to explain a bit more uh, how it works and to ensure that uh, the feedback from developers get uh, final into the teams and yeah sometimes i get to code some code here and there <laughs> <laughs> nice nice we, we have ha a question in the yeah chat. i was going to say we have a, a question from the chat from someone you might know <laughs> that's yes. asking who's your favorite manager <laughs> so that is actually a, a really funny uh, story do you remember a tweet about um that you were asking uh, if you could join us, you might get promoted because. Yeah. Uh, and then you said you get better chances with Yasmin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Guess who is my manager now? Yeah. And now you're live. <laughs> so, okay, I think there's one missing piece, which is you have to have a one on one right after the stream. So you can still organize it yeah. if you want. But I don't know. Yasmin, make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Already, already that that's so this is this is good. I mean uh, this is more like um, career with Italians. Right? <laughs> yes, it feels exactly. like you know like a uh, career trajectory with Italians. Wait, uh, do anyway, we do uh, we need to start our guest uh, to start asking our guests to pay us to be here so they get a promotion? How no, does no, it no, work? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I will always pick knowledge over money. So this is this is why we do this. Um, because I can make money by myself, but I mean, knowledge about glands, I only can get it from Marcel. So, <laughs> so I, I have the money part covered. Let's talk about knowledge now. Well, um, now, now we have uh, we don't have the documentation released yet, um, right? I mean, Alpha is quite early, so um, the APIs are subject to change, and we are yeah. just uh, building as well. Um, but we return do of have... investment will be yes, will be a bit correct. negative. <laughs> correct, correct. So, um, but on the blog post that I uh, that you are just showing now, yeah, there sorry. are links to the GitHub um, to the to the GitHub sample. Um, um, there is a this really one? simple sample. Yes, that is yes. the announcement the link again. Was. Perfect. And it goes, yeah, here. So it have a quick getting started, uh, how to set it up. Um, it has as well a uh, super simple widget and a um, first to-do widget. It's still like working, uh, working progress. It's a to-do widget, even. Yeah, yeah. Of it's done. Yeah. <laughs> You don't even I mean, have this, to code it. This is gonna be this is gonna be so much copy pasting. I mean, wow! I love you. 
I love you, Marcel. This is like like hey, two hours of work. Did you ask Marcel to make the sample to do no, widget? No, I have I had no idea. I was like, this is just good karma. You see, you see, when you're like a nice person, then nice things happen. That is how it works. Fuck it, I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So well, that's the that's the usual the usual compose uh, ish syntax that we are familiar with. So now, nice. Uh, to to recap. Here. To recap for people that might not have been uh, for the previous episode, the way uh, Glance widget works is uh, you still need the app widget provider uh, XML file like you would for a normal app widget. Uh, you need a broadcast receiver definition in your manifest, uh, which uh, uh, in term is going to be a Glance app widget receiver. Uh, which I think only has to do one thing, right? Uh, just instantiate the widgets, right? Yeah, just create it. If I'm not yes. mistaken. So, so the the receiver, the glance app widget receiver, extends from the app widget provider. Um, so you could still reuse the methods that uh, provides there, like on update, on enable, on disable. Um, but <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I mean there might be some cases that you can you need that, but uh, Glance tries to uh, wire everything for you. So in general, this is what everything what you need on your receiver. Perfect. Um, then all the rest is handled on the app widget instance, Glance app widget instance uh, itself. Perfect. So and then speaking of the Glance app widget, uh, I mean there is one main function which is content, right? That's the one that you always have to implement. Uh, and then right. there's other stuff that you can do. And uh, again, the nice thing about Glance is that you have uh, like content you might notice is a composable. And the uh, API that you use, the DSL, looks a lot like the compose one with some notable differences. For example, uh, you use Glance modifiers instead of normal modifiers. Um, and uh, there's other things like, for example, for on-click listeners, you don't have a real on-click listener, but you have actions uh, that are pretty much mapping the pending intents, correct? OK. Uh, there's other stuff you can do that I don't know about. So if there's anything you think is notable, go ahead. So I think one of, one of the things that I like the most from the Glance uh, app widget is that we provide uh, an API for sizing. So mm. um, you yes. can define, you can override uh, the value um, size mode, I think it's called, um, mm -hmm. that by default is uh, size mode single. This is the, the, the mode where basically you're saying my widget will only have yeah. um, one minimal size that I support. And then I don't need to recreate my UI if the size changes. So when the user um, resize the widget, um, make it bigger or smaller and so on. Um, and this then allows as well two new modes. One is exact and the other is responsive. And these modes uh, provides yeah. you a better way to handle uh, sizing. Um, and that is really great because then inside the code itself, you can you know use if if else statements to check if you have enough size to fit your widget, and if not, mm -hmm. you don't add certain composables into it. Um, what makes it ah, simple? So, so this is how you achieve like dynamic content at some level, right? I mean, you do you do this kind of logic, and then you add programmatically or not, and that's actually handy. Correct. So on, on the normal Compose and the Pack Compose UI, you would you would be able to get as well the size, right? And based on that, you might add a com you can call another composable method or not. If you don't call it, it means it doesn't appear. If you call it, it will appear. So for the widget, it's the same. It's just that um, everything, it's not like uh, recomposing uh, on the way that the traditional app uh, works. And so what happens is that when you define that your size mode is um, exact, for example, it means that every time that the widget changes its size, it will create the content function all over again. So you will recreate the full uh, yeah. UI. Nice. So yeah, just to and look at the code we had written, we have uh, we had set the size mode responsive with 
two different sizes, one 36 by 36 and one 100 by 96. Uh, can you do the size size thing with uh, cells as well, or is it only uh, with dips right now? Um, so right now it's with dips uh, because basically you um, rather specify which is the size that you handle uh, in terms of, of DPs. Um, and then the framework itself for the responsive mode, what it does, it tries to fit uh, the best fitting size. Mm -hmm. So in this case, for example, that you defined uh, two um, sizes on the responsive mode, yeah. it means that the first time that you place the widget, it will be the content function will be called um, two times um, or four times for foldables um, with the these sizes. So if you on site the content, you call a local size dot current. Um, um, you will get every time like one of these sizes. Yeah, on the there you size. go. Okay. Yeah, here you do. So. Mm. Basically, you are saying here, these are the two sizes that I support. Create my content um, with these two sizes, and then Glance stores that on, on, on memory. And whenever the widget changes on size, it tries to determine which is the size that fits better on the available size on that moment. Um, okay. So it might be that there is bigger, the, the available size is bigger than the one that you defined, but the one that you defined is the one that fits better, so it will put that one. Got it. Um, is it going to yeah. scale the widget or is going to be, because I, I, I'm confused about, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you say the, the, the best size, so let's say I, I have, I don't know, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here that you can resize the widget and at some point you try to to make it you know just right for the content that you have uh, is it here that is going to kick in and try to do the specific computation to actually check that is fitting and you are not guessing from from a user perspective is what is it um so let, let me try to because i i i think uh, i think with cells right i mean i'm uh, I'm no app widget uh, super developer. This is the, my first experience. But when I use widgets, like you know the calendar one or the, the usual one, I just try to do the launcher grid kind of thing, right? So I, my, my idea around widgets is like, OK, it's basically like a matrix two by two. And that's it. I don't have the perception of how many dips is there. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have one of the members of Glance team as well joining uh, on the chat. Yeah. Uh, so he, he uh, actually uh, mentioned uh, that you might be confusing because the cells that we added is just a, a hint for the launcher. So whenever you on your metadata specified the target cell, um, that's just a hint for the launcher. But the available size that you get is um, it might depend on the screen size and how the um, launcher um, defines each cell, right? So it's it's not that one cell is always 90 dps or two cells. Yeah, is, okay. um, so then, on terms of um, on the code, when 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 you do that, um, you will always get the. So let, let me let me start for the exact mode, the size mode. Uh, mm -hmm. This is yes. basically every time that the available size of your widget changes, you get. Uh, call again on the content. So content gets um, called again to provide a new UI. So if you get the uh, the size on that moment, it's going to provide you the available size that you have on the launcher. So that's the kind of the square or the rectangle based on the user defined. And it will give you the, the DPs in, in width and DPs in height. Based on this information, okay. you can create your UI, right? Um, okay. Then you say, okay, I, I will not add this extra text because it will not fit. Because I know that my uh, icon plus my text is 100 dps and I'm only getting uh, 105 dps. So that means that it will not fit. So this allows you okay. to create fully responsive um, kind of yeah. widgets. Uh, the only problem of that 
is that computational wise, it means that every time that the user changes the, the size, your full UI gets created again. So the transition sometimes might be a bit bumpy. Um, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm resizing the widget, so I can't actually expect that everything is fancy, whatever. I mean, there is a bit of I logic think the point is that it can be smooth if you use responsive, right? Correct. And yeah, yeah. when you use responsive, you are saying, I am, def I am handling these two sizes. Because with exact potential, you could be handling any type of size, right? Because every time your content will be called. Uh, but if you have certain widget that, let's say, you have a rectangle version of the widget, and then you have a square version of the widget, um, you can pre-calculate how much your rectangle and square tends to, uh, to take and define this as a responsive size. And then instead of every time that the user changes the size, content gets called all the time, it's already created. So the first time that the widget places, the content will be created with the sizes that you defined on responsive. And then the launcher just um, takes the best fitting one. Uh, this, by the way, is nothing new from Glance. This uh, was already uh, a new API introduced in Android 12. That um, there is a documentation that talks a bit about this. Yeah. I, I know it's a bit confusing. It's difficult uh, to explain. There is a sample. Uh, that um, might help you in the Android X repository itself. Um, or even at the ADS talk um, that mm -hmm. is linked on the blog post, uh, towards the end, I show as well an example of um, size mode single, size mode responsive, and size mode exact. Uh, to totally at the end, um, okay. even more, 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 Aha, more. Yeah. There you go, yes. So maybe I can just put it here while we talk. But so you see, single here is showing um, always the same size. So basically, to explain it quickly, the widget is showing the mode and the um, value of the local size value uh, on the content okay. function. So for single, no matter what, you always get 110 by 110, right? Mm -hmm. Now on the exact mode, if you see every time that I change, the value of the of the size changes. Yeah, it's very because it means precise. that ev every time that the size changes, the the content function gets called, so I get a new value of the size. And yeah, displays. you can print it. Fair Correct. Enough. In response mode, responsive mode, instead I define it uh, three sizes, and you see that it's kind of a smooth. It doesn't even look like jumping or anything. Uh, basically, the UI is already there. It called uh, the three sizes uh, at the beginning when I place the widget. And then at runtime, it decides which of these three sizes fits better um, on the available space. Uh, so when when you resize the, um, the widget, so then you are only updating the content. Or I mean, if if the if the widget is already there, or I'm getting it wrong, probably I'm I'm, I'm getting it wrong. Um, uh, anyway, ne <laughs> never mind. I'm I'm, go I'm gonna just need to because you know. But it, I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy that the the responsive is smoother, so I know where where to go first. So it's keep it simple, even. So that's that's my my way. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, um. I think that you get you need to get your hands dirty, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, to to really fully exactly. understand these modes. Um, in the in the blog post as well, yeah, exactly. Here is explained as well. Um, uh, this is one of the samples that basically resizes uh, and then changes the UI based on the available size. This uses the responsive app widget. Um, I actually have a question about responsive that I wasn't able to. Uh, understand properly when I was playing with it. So uh, say you have two buckets defined as like two breakpoints, let's say one is, uh, I don't know, 100 by 50 and the other one is uh, 200 by 100. Uh, if the current size is between the first and the second, the, the, the one that the launcher will pick is gonna be the smaller one because it's not big enough to contain everything for the larger one, correct? Um, 
If I remember correctly, it will always try to find the best fitting one, the one that fits inside the bounds, right? If there is uh, no size available, it will try to find the one that's closer to that on the size. Yeah, what I meant is, say you have the first size, which is smaller, and the second one, which is larger, and the current actual DP size that you have on the launcher, because of the size the user has chosen, is in between the two. It's going to pick the smaller one, not the larger one, right? If the larger one doesn't fit on that bounce, yeah, it will pick the smaller one. Okay, yeah. but you, even if the layout that is picked is the smaller one, if you do something like fill max width, it's going to fill the whole width, not just the, the one you thought it would be, correct? Correct, correct. Okay. Correct. Yes, that is, I mean, at the end is your implementation, right? You can, yeah. um, you can then create a huge uh, widget and say that your uh, responsive is uh, zero dps and zero dps <laughs> and it, it just will always take that one uh, but then it will look bad um, yeah at that point might as well use single right yeah correct okay i think um that's a good introduction uh android studio is still <laughs> is still in the na -ah phase of things but um uh, let's say if I can uh, just do it like this. I mean, it's not going to be the best, but uh, Gradle should work. He said famous last word, Ingly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, this is a tip when um, developing widgets. Um, when you launch on the Android Studio, it yeah. will always launch the activity of the application um, and as well. Has optim optimizations from Android 11, I think it's uh, that might cause your widget to not um, refresh ah. um, on an install. And as well, the main activity will always be launched, right? And then you have to dismiss it and go. So if you launch like this, what you just did right now, like app install the back, that's the best way. Okay. Um, nice. We are working on that. You, you are a genius. You are a genius. <laughs> I do what I can. Um, Marcel has a Nico. Probably yeah, Skype fix that. Is is the, it's the usual thing where Skype at some point Thanks, decides Mark. that it wants to duplicate the audio. Okay. Um, yeah, let me know when he stops doing that. So when you can't hear uh, <laughs> Marcel anymore, and then we will know that Skype has decided to go back. Uh, Thanks. So Perfect. Yeah, this is going to be taking some time, I think, because it's the first build after updating first AGP. Build of the day. So, um, but um, one thing I wanted to ask while we're waiting, uh, can I add preview this? So, yeah, that's a challenging uh, thing. Uh, we are looking into better tooling for Android Studio. Um, as I mentioned, <laughs> right, we would prefer not to like uh, have to run the Gradle command, install the back. Um, oh, sorry. Don't worry. It's me. <laughs> we have. It's uh, probably it's Mark. It's Mark. <laughs> it tends to be the case. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I was saying, like, we would prefer, right, not to um, that you have to run the Gradle command. So we are working as well on on, on tooling on on how to make development easy as well on Android Studio for widgets and preview apps uh, is definitely on our radar. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, as you explained at the beginning, Lance, be troll, it's not uh, like the Jetpack Compose um, uh, that you're familiar for the application, where it yeah. you know it draws on the camera and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's let's say easier to um, be able to create previews. Um, Lance actually translates into remote views and XML generation and and, and so on. Um, so it might be a bit more challenging to um, display the preview, but it's something we are looking into it. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask, it used to be the case on uh, the AOSP emulators that there is a widget, there was once a widget tester thing. Uh, there was an app that you could use to test your widgets. Uh, and I seem to remember it was slightly faster than using the launcher. Do you know if that's something that is still possible to use? Because I haven't seen it in a long time. On emulators um i know what you mean i don't have an answer for that <laughs> okay that's fine I, I i've not been using it um i 
Yeah, on on my case, I normally um, use the, the physical device for the widgets. I mm. I've, uh, um, I find it, it it might run uh, faster uh, in some cases. Um, but yeah, that is as well something as well um, that uh, need to look into it. We broke something! Yay! Yeah, so that's one Surprise. of the that's one of the things we did as well. Like instead of um, because the widgets live on a different process. Um, if you break something, you, you know, like the widget will not display. Um, so now we are uh, displaying a UI and hinting you to look at the log cut. <laughs> yeah, uh, log cut doesn't want to let go. <laughs> this one is going to stay there, I think, for a while. Uh, but let's see. Uh, glance uh, doesn't say anything. Uh, let's suppose let me try this way. Nope, still only that one. I don't know what's going on. I think Android Studio is not being particularly cooperative today. So there's that. Uh, it might just be some weird problem. So I'm going to try and remove it and add it again and see if that helps. There you go. Aha! Now it works. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, our responsive <laughs> layout. <laughs> it's just saying, I'm big, whoa. <laughs> I thought it would be a pizza. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that the emoji choice was due to the fact that we were having some uh, bugs. Uh, we were trying to figure out how <laughs> responsive worked without any documentation. So that some people were like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, it was um, frustration-driven driven development, so yeah. that's what you end up with. But it's smiling, and I love the end yeah, of yeah, emojis, it's, it's so yeah, like yeah, any emoji is good. <laughs> um, I think there's also, like, this is the case where um, we are supposed to have the number of items, but we don't really, and I'm quite sure having, like, taken a better look at how Glance works, that this is not the right thing to do. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a wow. minor Genius. hunch Genius. that I might have fucked Genius. that up. <laughs> so how do we do this? <clears throat> yeah. So I'm I'm generally I generally want to ask because the project is open source. So if we do it correctly, this becomes you know supportive for the community. So let, let's try to make it right. <laughs> Instead of punching it in the face until it works, <laughs> tr let's try to make it just correct. So, okay, uh, yeah. So the 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 way to update widgets it's uh, a bit tricky indeed uh, because widgets live on a different process. So you cannot just you know like um, like here launch uh, an effect uh, that will run a, a coroutine or something and then uh, um, update the 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 widget or like how an, it's like using like in recomposition, right? So the this launch effect on the normal application uh, using Jetpack Compose, you would modify some value and this will create the tree to recompose and update the UI. So we just live on a different process. So everything that is um, in the content function will be uh, translated into a remote view and sent to the um, remote process. On this case is the launcher. So you don't have any more access to the code and your application might be um, killed at any point, it might be finished, the process uh, uh, might be completely killed. So you cannot have like this like um, launch effect or like uh, threats running in the scope of the widget because there is no scope per se. Mm. Per se. Um, so normally what happens is that the Broadcast receiver, so the Glance app widget receiver, it's mm -hmm. at the end a broadcast receiver. Um, yeah. Basically, the launcher uh, sends you an action that is handled by the Glance app widget receiver um, and tells you, hey, um, place your widget, update your widget. And mm -hmm. this is where you can, the system will call the content function and send this to the launcher. So as you know, broadcast receiver, they have a limited time that they can be uh, um, running. Um, so you cannot run um, blocking task or running task in there. Uh, OK. So now it has, has to be fast. 
Yeah, exactly. So how do you actually um, run um, tasks that need uh, fetch data, right? Or, or things like this. So okay. one of the things you can do is to start a worker. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you okay. need the data, you start a worker uh, on the worker itself. You can then call update widget and passing the new data that you fetch. Mm -hmm. ah. You can as well uh, potentially on your uh, application on, on create. Um, fetch data at the beginning and store it on memory cache. And whenever the widget is there, we'll uh, fetch it. Yep. Um, or have more complex layers, right? On a proper, probably on a production application, you would have uh, some sort of repository pattern. Um, and mm -hmm. then whenever the data layer changes, you just call update from that data layer itself. Um, and you update the okay. widget. So you, you you can build it completely independently from the the data source, and the widget is not even gonna observe the data source. So you just push the update to the widget, and that's it. So when when you have the data, you just push it, and right. and then everything is taken care of. And you so cross you the should fingers be doing. <laughs> Well, I mean that's that's the, the the that's the standard attitude. But the the part that I like is that the the widget itself is basically just taking care of rendering a showing content, and then you you get the content wherever you are already getting the content because maybe you are showing the same the same stuff in the app itself, you know, when because if, if you have a list, probably uh, it's similar. In my case, I'm thinking about the to do list, right? It's the same list here and there. It's just the same model that goes around and then whoever gets it on the presentation layer, it just shows differently. But the, the model, the data stuff is the same. And this right. is actually very powerful because it simplifies a lot what you put in content. That's just correct. In, inject. So how can we get the content? Sebastian, I can't remember. Are we doing dependence injection in the widget? Or no, I mean, how can we, we are provide, uh... not yet. So, so yeah, so that's something we still like, you know, figuring out the best practice, of course. Um, but right now, one of the best ways that at least I find is that your widget actually only knows about data. Um, uh, classes data layer, right? It doesn't, it it doesn't fetch things. It doesn't uh, run complex things uh, or logic. Uh, you just pass data to the widget. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's say kind of a state, right? You pass a state. State uh, data yeah. is loading. Data uh, um, error or data is there, and then you render that. Um, so you can pass that on the constructor as a parameter on the on the widget. So here, uh, sorry. Uh, here, yeah, which we already have, right? Okay. okay so okay, we okay. have this. We, I, I think we got it partly right because we got the the parameter in the constructor. Uh, we had created this method. I, I'm not sure this is the right way to invoke an update, but essentially we have this uh, service that is always running, and whenever there's a date update, it will call this method. Yeah, and is this the right way to request a widget update? Yes. So we have as well, and um, uh, so this is this is one way. Um, there, are, we are still sorting out what is mm -hmm. the best way, uh, but this is one way. Another way is you can create an instance of your widget because here you have the data already, so you can say uh, can can only widgets and create a new instance and pass the notification count. OK, so let's say I'm going to make this non-nullable. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think this breaks anything here. And I don't think this is going to break anything else elsewhere. No, it's only here. Perfect. So I can say, instead of doing this, uh, what you're suggesting is doing a can only widget uh, with notifications count. And then calling on this. And then you can say update all. Got it. And, and then I have the context. Yeah. So this is the easier way on the sense that you don't care if you have multiple instances of the widget. Mm -hmm. You okay. will always just update 
all of them. And I think for your type of widget, that is um, what you want. So if the user would place another widget, you want as well to be updated whenever this data changes, right? Yeah. The update all method is the, the one that existed before. It's not a glance thing, right? It's from the previous widget uh, API, if I recall correctly. Um, well, it, yeah, we, we tried to map some of the previous uh -huh. widget APIs. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it, there was something uh, similar there that you could pass an ID or you could just say update all mm -hmm. and we'll update all the instances. Um, so in this case, it's as easy as that. You create a new instance of your widget, passing the new data value that that, that you want, and you say update all. Perfect. And this is great. I mean, this it is will super update handy. all the instance. Uh, now, if you have a widget where every instance that the user places needs to be treated as a separate instance, is when you have to do what you were doing before, right? Like um, um, getting like all the available IDs for the given widget, and then identify which mm -hmm. one is the one that you want to target and, and so on. But that's yeah. kind of more edge case, I would say. In general, most of the mm -hmm. people will say, I uh, have one instance. Um, or I don't care if I, there are multiple instance. I, it's always uh, the same, treat as the same. Yeah, I mean, having having multiple instances that update in a different way, it feels it feels very weird. Well, it, yeah. I mean, no, I'm no widget user, but that feels like is it a, like a real use case? It is in the case that uh, you, if your widget is configurable, imagine that you want to know the oh, okay. the weather of uh, my hometown, but I know the weather of I don't know, London. So every time you place the widget, you can configure one instance differently. On that case, you only want to update the weather of my hometown whenever it changes. Uh, not when, mm. like I will not update London if my uh, the weather of here. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair so enough. there there are use cases definitely, um, but I think on yeah. a lot of um, cases is just sufficient with this. So it's not erroring it out, which is a good same. start. Uh, but it is saying like it's still stuck in the uh, waiting thing, probably no. because there is no new. Uh, Notifications and that's did, fed by the number remove, of notifications. But you remove the you remove the nullable, right? No, I left it in the end because I think uh, yeah. you still need a base case when the widget is just created, but you don't have the data yet. I think Fair the enough. reason okay. the reason why we had the launched effect here was that if you have just created the widget, uh, you don't necessarily have the value right away, so you need to go and uh, get it in the service. So I was wondering mm. what you could do instead to, uh, to, mm. to trigger an update as soon as it's... Um... Um, right. Uh, so on these, I, I guess that... Um, let me think. Probably you could... Uh, either, as I mentioned before, on the on application on create. Ah, no, wait. Because is this this number of items is cached somewhere? Uh, yeah, the notification listener service has a um, uh, state flow. Uh, that is the that we derive the number that we would display here instead of the power class. So. The idea is that from this, what we did before is, oh, we don't have the number yet because there is no new notification. If we got a new notification, that it would update the widget. But in the meantime, uh, we just use the launched effect for that reason to say, oh, actually, like get the number again and update myself with the number that I that you just fetched. But obviously, that that is not ideal because you don't want to do that in uh, inside of the content function yeah so on that on that case you would need like um to to trigger that um update or because here on the receiver can you fetch uh then here you're passing null but could you fetch the cache value uh probably uh let me do this. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, this is suspend. Yeah, that's the problem. 
Okay, yeah. Um, although, although I mean, but this it's a, it's is a state, a state flow. flow, so I can make yeah. it explicitly yeah. a state flow, and then I don't need first, but I can just do value. No, I can do value, and that's gonna work. Yeah, this is probably much better. <laughs> yeah, because the the idea here would be that uh, the first time you take whatever was already on the memory cache and mm -hmm. you trigger whatever uh, needs to update from um, from a worker, for example, you would maybe start a worker mm -hmm. uh, and ask to fetch something new or, or, or maybe yeah. on the application on create, you would make sure, you know, to start the service and provide yeah. the first value or thing like this. So. Um, yeah, the, normally... the service the service is always running, so that's not really a problem because as soon as the the application starts, the service will be running, I think, uh, or or so, maybe not, because um, this is not a good sign. <laughs> uh, so an, an, another option then would be that from the service They're running. Though. No, wait, I'm 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 stupid. This is wrong. It can be zero. It's okay. <laughs> It can be zero. What? Why? I don't know. Um, yeah. So it can be zero. That's fine. Uh, that was a problem. That was a bug. Off by one. Classic. Um, yeah. I think this one is like, oh, yeah, something is very wrong. But I was too lazy to actually design an error state. So it was like, yeah, yeah just use an emoji. <laughs> That's going to be clear enough. People will understand. <laughs> um, yeah, they did, right? Well. I forgot in the meantime. Eventually, but... eventually, eventually, <laughs> Sebastian, eventually, eventually. Yep. So the, the idea is uh, your suggestion is to start with a state uh, or like an idle state, then then triggers actually the fetching at yeah. some level. Because... So the widget should be passive, uh, okay. to put it on a way. Um, I would say that the widget should not trigger um, fetching um, things. It should be that the application, mm -hmm. uh, unless that the, the user clicks on a button or something like that, then you can add an action and then uh, run things. But okay. uh, when the widget is placed, it should just take whatever is on the cache um, okay. and then have another mechanism that whenever that cache or that data changes or calls the update on the widget. Um, another option, if you need to really trigger some fetching the moment the widget is placed, then I would suggest to um, use a worker with the policy to say keep, and then you just uh, launch the worker every time that they're um, the on receive, for example. Um, it's called. Yeah, I mean, do we do we have listener like callbacks on the widget? I mean, do we know when the user resized uh, yes. the widget? Yeah, so, so we can know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, everything is handled by for you by glance, but you can still access the on update, uh, on enable, on disable. There are like a couple of um, callback methods uh, that will give you information of what's happening. Okay, so let's we try again. We know what's happening to Android Studio, on the other hand. Nope. So there's okay. an error. Why is there Check an error? Check the exact error. Yeah, I mean, no filters and do plans. Oh. No, it's not printing anything. Uh, so it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, that's a bug. Uh, but, that's why we are here. Yeah, it's all right. Do you? Aha! Now it works. Ah. There must be some okay. weird bug. I'm not sure. But, but I want I want to know how to do the the trigger with the work manager, please, Marcel. Uh, yeah. I don't so... want to build the work manager. I just want to see how we can get the <laughs> the, the signal. So if you go into the onto the glance app widget receiver. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, so 
you have you as you see it extends up widget provider so click on that one as well um and you have on receive that will basically handle the different callbacks if you go down you might be able to see the, the different um abstract methods probably oh yeah well i can just do this there you go yeah so here you see you have all these um callbacks uh, there um and okay. maybe so we we can override no we can override them right yes you need to call parent for on updated list um and for uh, add parent super i mean um I would say that maybe the on enable might be the a good moment to trigger the 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 worker because that I think it says that it's a broadcast received whenever it's so there, there is a suggestion there is a suggestion in the chat from somebody that knows what they are doing on app widget options changed is for resizing Yes. Yes, but you don't want to launch the worker every time that there is on resize. Right? So, so you launch it here, you kill it here, right? Okay. In and out. That's okay. Back. So this is this is really like only the problem on your case is that the first time that the user places the widget, um, you don't have the data. Yeah. So this, I guess that you could do it on enable. Um, and then uh, start the worker, and the worker starts the service and then calls an update or something like this. Okay. So if I'm interested only in the, okay, when I place the widget, I want to trigger a refresh, I can do it in enable, I do the thing, I get the data, I do the update, I killed the worker or whatever, I don't, I'm not familiar with the API or the worker, but mm. I have a, um yeah okay so looks looks doable the yeah um these are as well um uh as i said the uh, oh, okay the, 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 on enable the... is only when the first instance of the widget is added so i place the widget i don't have any data because i haven't even run the app yet uh so that would make sense right i place the widget I fetch the data that shows the data. Yeah, that, but um, he's right. Probably on enable uh, is not the right one because it's only the first instance of that specific widget. So if you would place another instance, on enabled is not called. Mm -hmm. So you might not have. So actually, you would do it on updates probably. Um, and then just okay, make, so I'll, I'll... make sure to not call it over and over and again by defining the policy on the worker. There is a policy called uh, keep. I think that will mm -hmm. avoid um, start over a worker if it was already running. Okay. 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 okay cool. Yeah. And and another option, as, as I was saying as well, is that um, because uh, the glands of widget receiver is at the end a broadcast receiver, that means that whenever so whenever the user places the widget into the launcher, your application uh, process might not be there, right? So the moment yeah. it places it sends a broadcast event to your um uh, receiver uh, and that makes your process to a start so the application uh, instance the on create will be called um okay there as well so that's another way that you could say every time my application process starts i make sure that the data cache it's refreshed right um you call the mm -hmm. service and then the service oh. uh, tries to update the widget if there is any widget. So that is another option. OK. What happens if I actually do update on a widget, but the widget is not there? It's just going to the void, or a, a widget just spawn on my, on my home screen? <laughs> no, so I mean, if you from the service, you are calling this method that create an instance and calls update all. If mm -hmm. there is no 
instance of the widget place, I think it just don't do nothing. I, I believe like it will um, just because uh, you need null. In, internally, basically what the update all does is it tries to fetch all the uh, glance IDs. So this is the app widget mm -hmm. ID and and update all the instance. But then it means that it will return an empty list, so it will not do anything. Fair enough. Okay. So I mean, so it let's like, say it's safe, right, to create a new instance and yeah, follow up. Yeah, one, one, one thing fewer to worry about. Like you know, and you can always call it and YOLO. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you need to simplify at some point, right? You can't keep everything in uh, in mind. It's just not feasible. But okay, so so far so good. So the the widget, so the, the UI part, pretty straightforward. The update part, wherever I am, wherever I'm, I have the data, I just do an update, and then we are good. If I want to refresh the data when I place the widget. We use we override on update, on update we do something, or we do it in the application on create. Because well, actually no. Well, I mean, if I do it in in the update, let's say in the update, I always call the worker, and I say refresh the data. Yeah. The broadcast receiver just tries to launch the app in background or at least starts the process well basically what happens is that the broadcast receiver will finish right because it, you have a limited time to run so mm -hmm. that's why i'm saying to use a worker because the worker will just um use the worker uh, api and eventually start mm -hmm. the background um thread the work and work worker and then you can you have time there to fetch to do consuming task right you could um I don't know, fetch a network well, request well, and, and so on on the worker. When you say worker, you mean the, the work manager Android correct. library, right? Yes, correct. OK. okay. That okay. internally uses you know the job scheduler and, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I'm asking, I mean, it's more like asking I want for to be a sure friend. that I understand and people. Yeah, I'm asking for a friend because I never put <laughs> this stuff. Because but but this is this is hilarious. You know, like you know, I have been doing this for like ten years. But eventually, over time, if you don't change enough companies and projects, you can like realistically have tried everything, right? So you know, probably you 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 are. I mean, you work that here, so probably maps are a thing in your domain, right? But it's not for everybody to know about maps, right? You know. Uh, and if you never uh, worked for something like you know, we need a like a background job or something, something. Um, it, it's yeah, it's legit that you don't know. Yeah. And the yeah. work manager part, I never used it because the only my my only experience with uh, scheduling uh, repeated tasks is on a, like a daily basis kind of thing. You know, every. 24 hours and I'm I think in my app I'm still using the Evernote library can it oh, be okay. yeah. it's like like a gazillion year wow. I can't even know it's... that yeah, that, yeah, 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 I yeah. believe it because... was deprecated in favor of, of the work manager API. Yeah, it but was there was, deprecated there was a 10 years ago. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just don't just stop being as smart as at the time last time that I checked uh Work manager library. I mean, I asked Pietro, so okay, so the, the thing was legit. Hey, uh, stop blaming Pietro. No, it will never I'm come. Very, <laughs> I'm a, I mean, if he comes, he has to bring the foldable, so he knows that. Uh -huh. um, so he's never gonna. Um, but jokes aside, um, the, the coding bits are not funny. Butter knife. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. Uh, the there was no. Um, so the use case that I was using it was not covered by the library yet. So that was the thing, right? You know, I asked Pedro, okay, how can I do this? And he was like, you can't at the moment. So eventually, probably the feature is probably going to be there today. But, you know, as long as it works and it's a low maintenance app, uh, YOLO, I need, I need yeah. to look. Though. If it works, don't touch it. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's not that you don't touch it, but you know, you know how pet projects are, right? Time is limited. You maybe want to try new stuff. Uh, you can, you know, you you, know. you come to a to peace with technical debt and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, deprecated libraries. And I'm not using Sherlock action bar Sherlock. You just just funny people <laughs> in the chat. You know, very supporting <laughs> audience. I mean, I, I, at some point I'm not gonna regret about this, right? You know, why did we just no. build like a created a create a study group it's just me and sebastiano it's like you know having trolls in the chat never helps sebastiano yes. i'm just rambling here and i'm seeing you coding like what the hell is going on here? i was bored that nothing nothing was showing up so i was writing a test notification thingy so we can see if the number actually updates <laughs> so you but you we got something okay. and it's yeah. there yeah oh look at it I, cool. Now you can put this in a for loop, and now we have multiple notifications. Well, I'll just put it here in the in the preferences screen. Um, I think okay. I just need to put some text, probably. I I don't remember how the notifications work. Title, title, go with title. Set content title. Yeah. Sure. Here you go. I am a test. Hi. And there is also content something. There's content description, I think. Yeah. I think I worked on. Is this like description? No. Body. Mm. Body something. Let's see. Let's no? see. Uh, well, colorized. I don't think so. Content. content. No, I don't want remote views. Text. I, don't, content I cannot text. use. Jesus. I cannot use glance for notifications, right? No. <laughs> No, uh, I think yeah, maybe they suggest text, text. maybe you need the icon. Uh, yeah, yeah I'll there. try that too. Thanks, thanks in the chat. Uh, and yeah, so but this is cool. I mean, this is I thank you. Yeah, a notification glance. I mean, fair enough, but um. But I, I, I want to be positive because I'm, I'm a positive person because you need to be a positive person. Otherwise, you cannot do the job that we do. I mean, imagine <laughs> being a negative. Imagine being a negative person and, and do this shit eight hours a day. Um, so it won't. That, you know, not, it doesn't scale. You know, you can do it probably for two weeks. Doesn't scale. So you need to be positive. So and being positive, I want to say this is good. This is already working, right? I mean, you can already build things. I get all the alpha uncertainties and you need to iterate on APIs and you need feedback. But this is huge. I mean, I'm, I'm super honest here. This is huge. This is just like a bunch of lines of code and that's it. You know, the UI is there. Uh, you have an update method. Well, you can call it from whatever. You take takes care of most of the heavy lifting. I mean, this is... This is good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if you have ever built widgets with the legacy um, APIs, um, definitely it was painful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we hope that with plants uh, helps. Uh, I, I think one of the main things we are looking for is, yeah, like um, feedback on the APIs, uh, understandable enough. Um, there are these all these restrictions, limitations that we are bound by the way that widgets work and remote views um, limitations. Um, so some of the things that we have to do might not be the most understandable or like more clear one. Um, so yeah, we're looking for that, like to see if the people uh, can find um, things that they don't understand at all and maybe we can improve or, or do some yeah. improvements there. But yeah, actually plans will help definitely a lot the UI part, I mean, I, you will have to do the wiring for yeah, how yeah, to update yeah. the, 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 the data and all that. This is the same for the other widgets. It's no different. But there. that's the same for everything, right? I mean, even if I'm updating a fragment, at some point I need to come with come up with a, uh, an architecture to, to get the data. But yeah. displaying the data, it, it became yeah. very, very straightforward with this. Correct, correct. 
Um, so yeah, uh, let's let's see. I mean, they are definitely missing some APIs there. Um, I think one of the important ones that we are looking as well is like better on on how you can theme uh, the UI uh, and and some other APIs that they maybe we have not created yet. Um, so this is something that's coming up during alpha and. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see how it works. But definitely, you can create a fully functional widget already with whatever is there. When it comes to uh, the new um, checkbox switch that you get with Android 12, do you already have it in Glance? That kind of soup? can I click a uh, checkbox in the UI? Yeah. So Glance, what one of the things that does as well is um, it tries to um, make it backwards compatible for you on a sense uh, so you only create a checkbox composable um, okay. and it internally glance whenever it translates this checkbox into uh, the remote views it will either use the new checkbox on Android 12 so if the device is running uh, Android 12 or onwards it will directly use the checkbox with the animation and everything and for before uh, under 12, it will do kind of a workaround to use um, an image uh, with a drawable and uh, text. So, okay, um, nice. because That's before before 12, there was no checkboxes uh, in remote views. So then yeah. it does this for you. But uh, I I have very little experience with this. But if I click the checkbox on Android 10, is it gonna check the the widget or is going to open the app um, I, I, it's going to check the really widget. ask well it, it okay it, wow. yeah yeah so the um you can as well um implement the action callback uh and then handle whatever data it does but uh it will do the checkbox and as um on the chat they are saying and animations do even pre 12. Actually, nice. Very cool. I need to try this. Well, I'm probably just going to steal your to do. Do you have the checkbox in the to do <laughs> sample app? <laughs> just yes. Gonna, just even it's gonna you, be that's like you dinner. can go to your wife and be like, hey, honey, I made you a widget. And she's like, yeah. but you've been only away five minutes. And like, I'm that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's um, that good. And then it's gonna be like some some action movie music in the background, like like or even better, some like C. Uh, you remember uh, CSI with or Orlando? It was like with the with the glasses, you know, wow, <laughs> the <laughs> background. That's that's what I want to do. Um, Sounds totally yeah. plausible. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 the that's. And then I walk away, right? And then I just go to the kitchen. I was like, "Where are you going?" And, and you hear her shouting after you, "Ivan, it crashed!" <laughs> it crashed. Like, yeah, not and my problem. Just just... <laughs> not my... <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. I mean, that's a yeah supportive partners. And yeah, she she puts up with a, a lot of bullshit. So. Yes. <laughs> Heads on, love you, honey. Um, but but jokes aside, this is this is great. I mean, I mean, I want to try it as soon as possible. And yeah, thank you for the sample. I mean, jokes aside, that it's very 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 close to my use case. But having source code that actually, uh, um, you know, works. It, it, it works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, our kind of worked. It, yeah, it yeah. was just that we were holding it wrong. You know, it's more like it. It's 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 a a very specific kind of bed, right? It's more like on a ethical side of this is not good, right? It's more like a not a technical thing. Yeah, but uh, you see, you add it now, it works. It's fine. Uh, the only yeah. thing that doesn't work is the test notification thing. It's crashing, but there's a <laughs> tendency today of not logging anything to log it when something yeah. is crashing. So I don't yeah. know what's crashing. Uh, I mean, it's definitely Plus, this that is, that is crashing. So I like the fact that your Android Studio is redacting the code at some yeah. level. It feels you like can, one of those CIA see. PDF. Oh, you know, you I, I can make more. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. cool. There you go. You have another yeah. one. You want another yeah. one? 
you know, it gives you it gives you the the idea that you are like uh, it's ah. like a credit card number behind. Yeah. You know. Sorry, people, you cannot see yeah. the code. It's too good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trade secret. Yeah. That that's an interesting yeah. bug. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mean, uh, I think. Man, you... I don't know what's going on with Android Studio today. I think I need to reboot, but for very obvious reasons, I cannot do it midstream. So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because we already already restarted my Skype and OBS, so I will say yeah. we can stop here. But yeah, I mean, if you want weird bugs, you need to hang out with us more often because yeah. this is like a this is like a infinite res like a generator of weird stuff. <laughs> uh, and Sebastiano, most of the time, also report them to the issue trigger. So that's that's also yeah. useful. That's I will I will uh, actually report this uh, Android Studio bug, and I will link to the stream and be like, "Hi, person yeah. from the future that is looking at this from the issue <laughs> tracker." <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, oh, by the way, we are clipping this. So, Sebastiano, can you show how you can add more? <laughs> hey, 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 I've done that. Boxes. I've done that. Now that people enough. can clip it, <laughs> we can show it. Clip it, yeah. Uh, jokes <sighs> aside, so how, what, what do you think if we run the giveaway and then we wrap up, Sebastiano? Yes, let's do that because it's late already. So, so let's see. I'm rolling, and who's winning? Mark! Mark. Whoa! Congratulations, Mark is one of our uh, biggest supporter. Uh, he, he is, is like he is the, he biggest, is supporter. the biggest supporter. Um, he's the only one that has the the the, the larger tier on <laughs> coffee so far. So you are getting a shit tons of stickers and that you paid for. <laughs> Essentially, yeah, yeah like pl <laughs> plenty. I mean, he bought stickers for like everybody yeah for like half an year um but jokes aside mark i we already have your address so there is no even need to, um so um, thank you for the support thank you for the support and look at this beauty look at this so much so much fanciness <laughs> um marcel i mean if you want stickers you just let me know i just need your address we are shipping them for free to our uh, supporters that are winning the giveaway and our <laughs> guests. So we, we appreciate the time that you want to <laughs> waste with us, <laughs> uh, well, on, on us, on us. Uh, so just let me know. That that was fun. Yeah, it was actually really great timing. I mean, uh, yesterday uh, you <laughs> pinged me on Twitter like, hey, look, we are running that. And I was like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> that fits perfect to the announcement that happens at the same time. <laughs> So, yeah, I, yeah. I just want to point out that uh, we did not tell even anything. It was a surprise to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, this is what we do, right? I mean, yes. this has to be fun. I mean, that's, uh, no, no scripts. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, just to finalize. So if anyone has questions about plans, uh, you can reach me on Twitter. Um, I'm always happy to answer. I even sometimes uh, back fixing on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There are several reports that were fixed um, because they report on Twitter, but we have a better way to report. Uh, read the blog. Uh, <laughs> there, there is there is a, um, a link uh, to the issue tracker for Glance. So obviously that is a better way to report, and you can as well then attach all the necessary information to create a proper back. Uh, instead of saying it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, uh, can reach on Twitter and we are looking for feedback and, and hopefully uh, bringing this API forward. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, thank you again, uh, Paul, to you and to your colleagues as well that have been with us. Very helpful. Thank you very much. I am looking forward to making more widget stuff. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, Glance is now alpha. And uh, yes, thank you again. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you for making a surprise to even with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thanks. Uh, thanks. as usual, thank you to everyone that is uh, watching this. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Yes, the Apache, just wait a second. Just wait a second. <laughs> you, you got your thanks. 
Um, <laughs> we'll see you all on Sunday for the uh, last episode of the year. And then we're going to go on holidays slash uh, relax for a bit. Uh, and we'll see you in January again. But don't miss Sunday. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a weird episode. Uh, we're trying to make some weird things that might work, not work. We don't know. As always, it's gonna we're going to try. <laughs> so do we, do we have any guests on Sunday, Sebastian? The Mark. The, the, only, the mighty Mark. The Mark. Okay, I mean, so it's, it's going to be a stream Mark. for local people. Yes. <laughs> and, and I love you all. Thank you for supporting us again. Uh, we have a coffee page. Check it out. We have uh, the um, Twitch channel. Um, we have the the um, merch uh, shop. We are here to give you content. Let's do this. Have a great one. Take care. Bye. Ciao, Thank ciao. you.